we're going to have the ability for the mouth to actually open and close. And one of the things you'll see is that uh, there's a crease coming from the edge of the uh, orbicularis oris muscle, which comes from the side of the external meris of the nostril. And I'll bring the faces down as you see the diagonal line that I'm forming right here to kind of form that crease. Uh, I also make sure that from the front that my mouth is really getting this sort of oval circular mask shape. That's what I'm looking for here. Let's take these faces along the front and literally just extrude them together. Again, I'll do the same thing as we did with the eye, getting the extrude the selected component function from the shelf. Uh, and I'm going to choose the scale tool once I have that and actually scale it into two mouths and shrink this down a little bit. It'll look weird for a second, but what we're going to do is we're going to remove these interior faces along the center line, these two faces. Uh, and then take the faces inside the mouth here. We don't need these. Uh, and I'll take my vertices, which are pretty far apart, move them together, and instantly this starts like a little bit more like a mouth. By turning on the snap to grid function or holding down X on the keyboard using the move tool, I can snap these to the center line. And uh, that's looking pretty good. Now I'll just position this right where the mouth should be. Put that right on the lower edge of the lips. And you'll notice as well in the corners of the lips, we're going to get to this in just a second, but just like with the eyes, you want a little bit of an overhang. This is the bucinator muscle right here. And we're going to make sure that we get a little bit of overhang because of this muscle, which gives us a little bit of a crease to the side of the mouth. Right now we're going to kind of have like an old man mouth because of this, but uh, you know it's completely lipless here. But um, in a second we'll just see the refinement of these lips by adding in additional edge loops and getting this crease to work a little bit more exactly. Come in and soften my edges. Again, delete all my history, standard steps that I'm going to keep working on. I also notice there's a little bit of a open edge here along the nose. So let's come and snap these. Use again, holding down X while using the move tool. Allows me to snap to grid. Just making sure those are directly along the center line. It's working all right so far. Let's come in. We'll get the uh, insert edge loop tool. Let's insert an edge loop. One of the tricks here is making sure when you insert your edge loops that since the upper lip is going to be a little bit more tightly defined than the lower lip, which is going to be a little bit more rounded, that we make sure we can press these around so that uh, we actually get a sharper crease here, more diagonal. Again, we're going to get that overhang here in the corner of the mouth. And on the lower lip, we're going to start to round this out a little bit more, give it a little bit more space. There we go. Starting to find those lips. And from the front, you also want to make sure you're starting to get this end shape, which happens because of the filtrum, the notch between the walls of the filtrum and the upper lip and the bottom of the nose. Now again, to make sure we get sort of a tighter crease here, I'll insert another edge loop. And where I position it here, I'm going to position it pretty high. And then you notice I'm going to get the move tool and move it down pushing two edges a little bit closer together on the top lip and widening them out a bit on the lower lip. And this is really going to allow me that rounding to happen on the bottom lip that doesn't occur on the top, which gives you the big difference between these structures. The lips are looking pretty good. Let's soften the edges and see how this is really working. There we go. Still needs a little bit more work, but you know, it's really coming on its way. We'll add in a couple more divisions here just to make sure that this is rounding out properly and that we can actually define that chin. Uh, so I'll add in two more divisions. And um, if you're really strapped for a polygon count, these might not be divisions that you end up using. Uh, but uh, since I'm not really looking for a specific polygon limit right now, I feel I'm comfortable in actually putting these together. I'm going to actually push these around, see how this works. Round this out to fit the chin, following the contours from my orthographic images. And 
we'll pull this one back down and kind of fit the neck. And now this is really starting to fit onto the face pretty nicely. Making sure you always kind of space out my faces uh, so that they have a sort of even transition from smaller faces to bigger faces if, if there is a transition area. You never want to have abrupt changes because they can really sort of affect your texturing if you try to relax your UVs later. It can also have some adverse effects if you try and do some sculpting in a high poly modeling program like ZBrush or Mudbox. So I've got a whole bunch of divisions here already. I you know, don't want to go too high poly on this, but softening out the normals, we can see this is really starting to work. Uh, we can now work with the corners of the mouth here just a little bit, get some dimples if we need to, uh, just by pushing those in. We can define the filter a little bit by taking these vertices along the center line and pushing these back in. We'll rotate them and just push them in so they're at the same angle. And we can really tighten up the wall of the filter here by just pushing these together, just like that. Again, soften my edges, delete my history, standard steps you should be working on. They're pretty good. The jaw's still a little bit round. The forehead's a little bit round. We'll get to this stuff later. And now we're ready to start the next part of our model, which is fixing up the jawline here. I'm also going to take the mouth inside this section and extrude it back. Now I could use a select border edge tool, but as you notice, it actually selects all the open edges along the center line, since my open edge here is along the center. So instead I'm going to have to go a little bit more fashion, uh, holding down shift and just manually selecting these edges until I get that whole opening. And I'll extrude that selected component. I'll move it back, scale it up just a little bit. There we go. And uh, again, maybe make one more extrusion here in just a second, but let's touch up these points first. I just want to open this up because if I end up putting teeth inside this mouth, I need, of course, some place for those teeth to go and I don't want to be able to see back into the throat. Um, and again, sort of deny my illusion of a, a solid model by betraying the fact that it's actually just an empty shell. So uh, go ahead and I'll select these edges. If you're going to be doing this multiple times, you might want to make a quick select set out of this, which would be right here. Um, you can do that under uh, mod uh, Create uh, Sets, Quick Select Set, uh, make a set of edges that you can come back to again and again. But um, I'll get the Move tool. Uh, again, I'll scale this up a little bit. And um, here we go, looking pretty good. Just move these points downward a bit so that, again, I've got space for teeth and gums when I need to put those in.